the board. We'll now come to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Tyus. Alderwoman Flowers. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Moore. Alderwoman Hubbard. Alderwoman Ingracia. Alderman Coulter. Alderman Conway. Alderman Ortman. Alderman Vollmer. Alderman Villa. Alderman Arnowitz. Alderman Murphy. Alderman Howard. Alderman Green. Alderman Berenger. Alderman Rody. Alderman Kennedy. Alderman Davis. Alderman Spencer. Alderman French. Alderman Boyd. Alderman Vaccaro. Alderman Ogilvy. Alderman Cone. Alderman Williamson. Alderman Carter. Alderman Cruson. President Reed. Here. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Ingracia. Alderman Howard. Alderman Davis. Alderman French. Alderman Ogilvy. Alderman Williamson. Alderman Cruson. 24 present. Quorum being present, we've been led today in prayer by Reverend Sherry Sanders, who will be introduced by Reverend Teresa Danley. Good morning. Thank you, President Reed, for inviting us to be here today. Um, I want to also acknowledge that the Reverend Steve Robeson is here, the priest at St. Rose Philippe de Chen in Florissant, and the Reverend Tommy Pearson is here from Greater St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church. So we're glad that, to be here this morning. And I want to thank these clergy for being here from Missouri Jobs with Justice and Show Me 15, and now the Reverend Cherie Saunders, who's the associate pastor just up the street at Washington Metropolitan AME Zion Church in Midtown. Good morning. morning. Let us prepare our hearts for prayer. Most holy and everlasting God, our Father, we have gathered together to conduct your business. But before the business begins, we have to start by saying thank you. For you have allowed us to see another day. And we call on you now to bring wisdom into this room. Bring compassion. Let us be concerned about those that are trying to make ends meet. Let us be concerned about those that are trying to keep one foot in front of the other. Help us to make wise decisions. Help us to make decisions that will give someone hope, give someone encouragement. We thank you for all that you've already done, and we ask that you would continue to be in the midst of all that we continue to do. And we will give you the honor and the glory and the praise for everything that's good and perfect comes from you. Oh, Lord, help them to remember your children down here. Help them to love them and do what's best for their families and their communities. And we know that this can be done. And we're saying thank you right now. In the name of him who is able to keep us from falling, we say amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We will suspend with our regular order of business, take up our courtesy resolution calendar, move for adoption of our courtesy resolution calendar, seconded by the Alderman from the 22nd. Alderman from the 22nd, would you like to approach the dais for the presentation of resolution number 73?
Good morning. It gives me great pleasure to celebrate a member of my community who has served the city of St. Louis for over 23 years and has been a great community servant as well. Most people here probably know Ron. Ron has been around the Board of Aldermen for as long as I've been Alderman for the past 12 years, and he's retiring. And although I often don't like to read the entire resolutions, I just feel it's appropriate that in honor of his retirement that those who don't really know Ron can get an appreciation for what he has done for the city of St. Louis. Whereas Mr. Ronald E. Thomas, affectionately known as Ron, has been serving the citizens of St. Louis for over 23 years. Prior to his career with the city, Ron served four years in the Air Force. After his military career ended, he served as a paid performance custodian at the Kiel Auditorium before joining the Street Department as a laborer in the early 70s. Ron began his career with the Board of Public Service and the Facilities Management Division as a paid performance custodian in 1992. He became a full-time custodian in 1994 and was later promoted to Housekeeping Supervisor 1 in 2000, where he will finish his career with the City of St. Louis. Whereas Ron has devoted years of cleaning countless offices, restrooms, and quarters for the city employees and general public that have visited the City Health Department at the Old Missouri Theater Building, the Soldiers Memorial Museum, and City Hall. And whereas during his career, Ron has been a dedicated, trusted, and valuable asset to the city of St. Louis, earning respect from his colleagues, both past and present, as well as the people of our community. And whereas Ron earned high marks for his professional work, he was assigned to the automatic chambers and offices for several years until he was transferred to 634 North Grand in 1995. By popular demand of the automatic staff, and the express request of the chief clerk, Ron was reassigned back to the Board of Aldermen. Ron was honored with the resolution number 35 for revitalizing the 5600 through 5700 block of Terry Avenue in the Wells Goodfellow neighborhood, where he has been a resident of the 22nd Ward for over 40 years. The resolution notes that under Ron's leadership, residents of those blocks, which is block unit 5243 representing, have beautified the neighborhood and maintained the largely single-family owner-occupied homes. And whereas Ron has now decided to take his well-deserved retirement from the city service to spend more time with his wife, Vivian, who I understand likes to play bingo, so maybe Ron will get out there and play bingo more often. He wants to spend time with his children and grandchildren, his mother and his family, and maybe even find some time to go fishing and visit a local casino. So not just bingo, he's going to the casino now. So we need that revenue, so Ron, I hope you win and you can, you know, put back in the coffers. But now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Autumn of the City of St. Louis that we pause in our deliberations to congratulate Ronald Thomas for 44 years of service with the City of St. Louis. And we wish him peace, happiness, and his retirement, and we direct the clerk of the board to spread a copy of this resolution across the minutes of these proceedings and to further prepare a commemorative copy to the end that we may present this to our honorary at a time and place named appropriate by the sponsor introduced on this second day of July 2015. Ron, I have certainly had a pleasure, you know, working with you down here at the Board of Aldermen. You've always had a smile. You've always been pleasant. You're, you're a great, you know, community men, a member, member, and it's an honor to represent you in the 22nd Ward. Congratulations, and I certainly salute you. Thank you for all your hard work. All the women from the first. Members of the board, I first asked the sponsor to add my name. I was here when Ron came down here. Uh, the first, when I was here the first time, Ron, when he first started, uh, the alder, alderman from the 22nd Ward has uh, really talked about the great things that he, he, he does, and, and he's a hard worker. I've never seen him in a bad mood. When he comes to work, he comes to work. If you ask him something, even if it's something out of his job range, he is uh, pleased to do it. Um, so I, I just wanted to add my congratulations and say what a great person you are. And if uh, more people would come to work like you, uh, the citizens of St. Louis would be much better served because if you're going to come to work, you have to try to work as hard as you can. And my mother raised me on a little saying that says, once a task is once begun, never leave it till it's done. Be the labor great or small. Do it right or not at all. Mm -hmm. You're that person that does that. 
and I appreciate that. And, and, and again, I would ask the sponsor to add my name because you're certainly a great employee Madam and a clerk, great person. Madam Clerk, please make note of that change. Add Alderwoman from the first, Sharon Tyus, as one of the co-sponsors. So noted. Alderman from the Alderman from twelfth. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, if, it's, if it's not out of line, I would like to make a motion to ask that the resolution be passed in bank. Been moved by the Alderman from the 12th, seconded by the Alderman from the 13th, that this resolution be passed in bank. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Clerk, please make, make note of that change uh, and have the Sergeant at Arms prepare another copy of this resolution in bank. So noted. Thank you, Mr. President. I also want to say, Ronnie, uh, congratulations. We've known each other for a number of years down here at City Hall. And, you know, I've always told you you're a dedicated worker. You do a great job. We've had a lot of conversations, and I think our friendship has always been there. Um, we still share one thing in common. You still owe me that steak dinner, but I keep confusing it from you. But anyway, I want to congratulate you on your retirement and, and, and wish you well in your, if you have any future endeavors or you're just going to enjoy yourself. Uh, it's been a pleasure knowing you and working with you at the same time. Thank you. All right, thank you. All of them from the fourth. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I never knew your name until today. Yeah. And you were recognized by your smile. Keep yeah. up the good work. God yeah. bless. All right. Thank you. Any further? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Ryan, I also want to add my thanks and also congratulations on a job well done. I finally had an opportunity to meet your spouse today. And I don't know if he smiles and he's nice like that at home all the time, but this guy... He always has a smile, he always has a kind word, and he always does a great job. Um, and you've been down here long enough to know that when you get all of these aldermen to agree in unison uh, on something, that's a big thing. <laughs> that's a big thing. And all of them have agreed to add their name to your resolution because they want, to know, they want you to know how much they think of you. And part of what the aldermen from the 22nd uh, was about to tell you before we took some other comments was that uh, this resolution, as you know, is the highest honor this board has to give to any organization or individual. And what it does is that it cements in time some of your many contributions on behalf of the city, the city or the citizens of the city uh, up until this point in your career. So your name now has been committed to the permanent records of our city. So 100, 200 years from now, when you research the records of our city, you will, have, you will know that Ronald Thomas made a significant contribution to our city, and you'll be able to read about this day and know that we paused in the deliberations of this board to make sure that you were properly recognized. Enjoy your retirement. We're going to miss you. Uh, and you may not want to take any of our calls, because if we're calling you, we're trying to put you back to work. But congratulations again. Let's give them one more big round of applause and let all the them for Thank you. Thank you. For, thank you for the love. <clears throat> uh, for the love from, you know, everyone. My coworkers and uh, taking care of the city. All been, I've just seen a lot. Worked in the fire department. I didn't clean a lot. Police department. Lot of, lot of bills. Health clinics. We, uh, we, I did it, but not by myself. My superiors, the ones that are still here and stuff. Is uh, Rachel that takes care of it now. Uh, Victor, uh, Victor People, the housekeeping supervisor too. We all come together. We all come. We're all stuck together, and we're still here. And thank you for the love. And I. Love you so much and appreciate you. Thank you. God bless you.
It's been moved and seconded that we adopt our courteous resolution calendar. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. With that, we'll return our regular order of business. Introduction of our guests. Alderman from the 25th. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to uh, have as my special guest this morning Mike Lewis, the president of the Missouri AFL-CIO, David Cook, president of the UFCW Local 655, Don Wiley, business manager, Laborers Local 110, Clint McBride, the government affairs director for Laborers Local 110, Jake Olson, the director for Missouri SEIU State Council, Mike Frame, the organizing director for the UFCW Local 655, Nancy Cross from the SEIU, Reggie Cavett, who's the uh, Secretary Treasurer of the ATU, and Bradley Harmon, who's the President of CWA, Local 6355. Thank All right. you. All right, thank you. All the women from the 13th. All the women from the 13th. Uh, uh, chairman and members of the board, I'd like to have as my special guest this morning, Todd Hake. Kenneth Taylor and Jeff Hans from the Carpenters District Council. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. from the fourth. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. I'd like to have as my special guest from Amory UE, Ms. Sheila Jones, also State Representative Tommy Pearson. He was also a reverend. So we have a lot of reverends in the house today. Also, Incarnate Word, all the good people from Incarnate Word, thank you for the vittles that you provided for us. God bless. And Rachel Smith. Thank you. All right. All of them from the 27th. Yes, thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. I'd like to have as uh, my special guest, Ms. Vita Travers, um, Leonard Johnson from the St. Louis City uh, Treasurer's Office, and my old friend and colleague, State Representative Tommy Pearson, and Michelle Whithouse. Thanks. All of them from the seventh. Board. I'd like to have as my special guest, my friend and former colleague, Rachel Smith from the Circuit Attorney's Office. All, right. All the ones from the 15th. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I'd like to have as my special guest today, Brian Williams from Congressman Clay's office. And I'd also like to give a shout out to all of the workers fighting for 15 who are up in the, the balcony here today. All the ones from the 16th. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. I would like to have as my special guest today, Gina Hackenworth with Ameren and Anthony Lencia with AGC. Alderman from the 22nd. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. I'd like to have as my honored guest three distinguished individuals, Ms. Sheila Jones with Ameren, Missouri, as well as Chris Pickle and Leroy Grant with AT&T. Thank you. It was also a hand a note we, uh, for the, we have a number of guests from St. Louis Youth Jobs, Bridget Flood, Executive Director of Incarnate Word Foundation. Um, we also have Patrick, I don't know where they are in the building, but if you, if you hear your name called from St. Louis Youth Jobs, oh, there you are, there you go. They said you were going to be over here. <laughs> yeah, please, please stand. We have Patrick, uh, Michelle Woodhouse, uh, Sarah Breed, and Jocelyn uh, Pendleton. So let's give them a round of applause. Thank you for all of your work, especially in a summer like the summer we're having. Um, St. Louis Youth Jobs have done a great job, and um, you're saving kids' lives. So thank you. Alderman from the 10th would like to wrap us up. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board, as we're gathered here on July 2nd, the start of the Independence Day holiday. It was on this day in 1955 that the Lawrence Welk Show first premiered, without which we must thank because it helped in, embed in the conception of the Alderman from the 23rd. Thank you for Lawrence Welk. <laughs> Alderman from the 18th, you recognize on approval of the minutes. Yes, Mr. President, members of the board, I move for the approval of the minutes of the June 19, 2015 meeting. Moved by the all in front of the 18th, seconded by the all in front of the 12th. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Report of city officials.
<clears throat> Report of city officials can be found in sections A, B, and C of the agenda and have them placed in all aldermen's mailboxes. We will dispense with line items 7 through 8. Will anyone take, like to take any bills off of any of our informal calendars? Will anyone like to take any bills off of any of our informal calendars? We'll dispense with line items 9 through 10, first reading of board bills. Board Bill 126, sponsored by Alderman Boyd and Ordinance authorizing and directing the street commissioner to take all necessary actions to honorarily designate the 5500 block of Page Boulevard as Bishop James Holloway Boulevard. Reference the committee. To the Streets Committee, Board Bill 126. That's the extent of reference to committee. Second reading. The following Board Bill was reported out of the Ways and Means Committee, Board Bill 78, Committee Substitute, sponsored by Alderman Carter, French, Kennedy, and Vaccaro, in ordinance pertaining to the allocation and approval of use of increased net position of parking funds, amending Section 2 of Ordinance 69809 to include Provision 3 and enacting in lieu thereof a new section pertaining to the same subject matter, providing for the annual allocation of funds for the Office of Financial Empowerment. The following bills will report out the Streets Committee, Board Bill 65, Committee Substitute, sponsored by Alderman Ortman, an ordinance pertaining to parking within the 2200 block of Cherokee Street Residential Parking District, authorizing the traffic administrator to designate the location and restrictions for curb parking of residential parking zones within the north side of 2200 block of Cherokee Residential Parking District, and containing definitions of penalty clause and an emergency clause for Bill 102, sponsored by Alderman Moore, and ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service to vacate travel in the most western 20-foot wide alley, also known as Colson Avenue in City Block 3728, bounded by Dr. Martin Luther King Drive, Whittier, Evans, and Pendleton. The following board bill was reported out of the Ways and Means Committee, Board Bill 124, Committee Substitute, sponsored by Alderman Carter, French, Kennedy, and Vaccaro, in ordinance recommended by the Board of Estimate and Apportionment, authorizing a supplemental appropriation amending an ordinance commonly referred to as the City Annual Operating Plan for fiscal year 2015 through 2016, appropriating and sending apart the sum of $309,066 from the Parking Division Fund for the operation and expenses of the Treasury Department. Office of Financial Empowerment Fund 1116 and containing an emergency clause. The following board bill was appointed out of the Transportation and Commerce Committee, Board Bill 119, sponsored by Alderman Woman Cruson and Ordinance Amending Ordinance 68572, which, which relates to a lease, the ground lease between the City of St. Louis and the Port Authority Commission of the City for certain land improvements comprising the Municipal River Terminal on the North River Front, approved by the Board of Estimate and Apportionment and the board Port Commission and the Board of Public Service, authorizing the extension of time to the ground lease and containing a severability clause the following board bill was reported out of the Public Employees Committee. Board Bill 125, sponsored by Alderman Williamson, an ordinance enacting pursuant to Section 56.54 of the revised statute of Missouri to repeal ordinance 69194 relating to the office of the circuit attorney providing that such salaries be paid bi-weekly providing for a payment of overtime wages on an hourly basis at the bi-weekly rate which such overtime when such overtime is authorized as necessary by the circuit attorney and containing an emergency clause. That's the extent of our second reading. Dispensable line item 14, perfection consent. Board Bill 77, sponsored by Alderman Coder, and ordinance approving the additional property petition of owners of real pop property seeking the addition of real property described as the Laclede Landing Subdistrict to be added to the existing district known as the Downtown St. Louis Community Improvement District Incorporated, finding a public purpose for the addition of real property described as the Laclede Landing Subdistrict to be added to the existing district and containing a severability clause and an emergency clause. Board Bill 84, sponsored by Alderman Woman Flowers and Ordinance, approving the blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 825 through 885 East Taylor and containing a severability clause. Board Bill 85, sponsored by Alderman Woman Green and Ordinance, approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 3862 Humphrey and containing a severability clause. Board Bill 80. 
86, sponsored by Alderman Rohde, and are approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for Shoto, Sarah Pappen, and uh, containing a severability clause, Board Bill 87, sponsored by Alderman Rohde and Arnold Spiving, a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 1470 South Vanderbilt, and containing a severability clause, Board Bill 89, sponsored by Alderman Davis and Arnold Spiving, a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 3819 Shaw, and containing a severability clause, Board Bill 90, sponsored by Alderman Conway and Arnold Spiving, a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 3447 Humphrey, and containing a severability clause, Board Bill 91 sponsored by Alderman Ortman and Arnold's approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for South Broadway, Dakota, Osceola, and Nebraska, and containing a severability clause. Board Bill 92, sponsored by Alderman Ortman and Arnold's approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 2924 McNair, and containing a severability clause. Board Bill 93, sponsored by Alderman Ortman and Arnold's approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 1925 Senate, and containing a severability clause. Board Bill 94, sponsored by Alderman Ortman and an artist moving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 2104 Sydney and containing a severability clause, Board Bill 95, sponsored by Alderman Ortman and Ornest approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 2739 Arsenal and containing a severability clause, Board Bill 96, sponsored by Alderman Ortman and Ornest moving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 3169 through 71 Iowa and containing a severability clause, Board Bill 97. Sponsored by Alderman Cohn and Arnold's moving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 4218 South 37th Street and containing a severability clause, Board Bill 88. Sponsored by Alderman Davis and Arnold's moving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 2000 Washington and containing a severability clause, Board Bill 106. Sponsored by Alderman Rohde and Arnold's authorizing the execution of an intergovernmental cooperation project agreement between the City, the Parking Commission, and Hampton Birth Home Transportation Development District, authorizing the execution of an inter- to governmental cooperation agreement with the Hampton Birth Hole Community Improvement District and containing a severability clause, Board Bill 120, sponsored by Alderman Balmer, and ordinance affirming adoption of a redevelopment plan, redevelopment area, and a redevelopment project, authorizing the execution of a redevelopment agreement between the city and Jerry Ackerman Motor Company and containing a severability clause, Board Bill 121, sponsored by Alderman Balmer, and ordinance designating a portion of the city as a redevelopment area known as the Northeast Hampton I-44 redevelopment area pursuant to real property tax increment allocation redevelopment act approving a redevelopment plan, a redevelopment project, adopting tax increment financing within the redevelopment area and containing a severability clause. Board Bill 112 sponsored by Alderman Vaccaro and ordinance to repeal ordinance 69190 and 69929 and establishing the salaries of employees in the sheriff's office and enacting in lieu thereof a new ordinance fixing the annual rate of compensation of command personnel and deputies appointed to assist in the performance of the duties of the sheriff and containing an emergency clause. Board Bill 123, sponsored by Alderman and Barringer, President Reed and Alderman Cohn and ordinance adopted pursuant to section 105.483 of the... Revised statute of Missouri reaffirming the provisions of Ordinance 69536, establishing the policy for the disclosure of potential conflicts of interest and substantial interest for certain municipal officials and containing an emergency clause. That's the extent of perfection consent. All in from the 18th, you recognize on the motion for the perfection consent calendar. Yes, yes, Mr. President, members of the board, I move for approval of the perfection consent calendar. Moved by the Alderman from the 18th. I entertain a second on that motion. Seconded by the Alderman from the 2nd. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Board bills for perfection. Board Bill 117, sponsored by Alderman Hubbard and Ornis, recommended by the Board of Estimate and Apportionment, authorizing and directing the St. Louis Municipal Finance Corporation to procure a loan for the purpose of funding the acquisition of real property in the city, including the cost of securing options to purchase such real property and other costs necessary to prepare such real property as a site for the Western Headquarters of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. All the one from the fifth, you work, recognize on the perfection of board bill number 170, 117. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the board, I'd like to move for a perfection of board bill 117. Moved by the all the one from the fifth, to entertain a second on that motion. Seconded by the alderman from the 26th. All the one from the 5th, you recognize. Continue. 
I believe there are some amendments to the bill. All right. All the ones from the 15th, you recognize? Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. President, uh, Alderwoman from the 5th. I'd like to move to make Amendment 1 to Board Bill 117. You have a copy on your desk. You actually have two copies. The first one had um, a source error in it, so we reprinted it for you. Um, but uh, I'd like to make the motion to to make Amendment 1 to Board Bill 117. Uh, could you state the amendment part of it? Sure. So what the amendment does... Um, in the form of a motion, I move to amend... I move to amend Board Bill uh, 117. One second. It's been moved and seconded, seconded by all of them from 25th. Please proceed, all of them. Thank you. Um, so what Amendment 1 does is it basically takes out 1900 Hampton as one of the buildings that would be used for collateral um, in securing this line of credit for the NGA site. Um, so each one of these uh, sections, uh, one, two, three, and four, um, had 1900 Hampton written into it in addition to 1520 Market Street and 1415 North 13th Street. Um, so in each of those areas, 1900 Hampton would be omitted, and the only buildings that we would be using as collateral would be 1520 Market Street and 1415 North 13th Street. Um, and this amendment came after much uh, discussion with, um, with uh, SLDC and the Comptroller's Office in recognizing that it is not necessary to have all three buildings up as collateral in order to secure this credit line. Thank you, Alderman. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Alderman from 21st? Thank you. Uh, will the sponsor of the amendment yield to questions? All of them from the 15th will yield for questions to yeah. all of them from the 21st. All of them from the 21st, please proceed. Thank you. Um, under the current language of Board Bill 117, uh, there are three city buildings, is that correct, that we're being asked to mortgage for this property, for correct. this project? Correct. Uh, under the testimony, as you mentioned, uh, of the Comptroller's Office during the committee hearings, uh, at least the first committee hearing, they said that we really only needed one building, which Correct. was the Market Street building. Uh, so I think it's a step in the right direction that you're shrinking it from three to two, but why not just the one? So in my discussions with SLDC and the Comptroller's Office, the consensus we were able to make was to remove one. Um, I obviously would like to see two buildings removed from there, um, but I felt like in terms of being able to re reach some consensus around the issue, if we could get one out, we are making progress. Okay. Um, thank you. So to speak to the amendment, um, I think it, like I said, is a step in the right direction. Uh, it's still a concern of mine, though, that we are mortgaging city properties, um, especially unrelated city properties, for a project out of the area of these buildings and we are doing it basically because we're borrowing money to buy land and property that is not worth the value that we're paying for it, which is why we have to take out mortgages. Uh, and I think that's a bit irresponsible on the city's part. I think it's definitely irresponsible to uh, create legislation that authorizes the mortgaging of city buildings uh, more so than we actually need. So if we only need one, uh, first of all, uh, you probably shouldn't move forward on a project where you need to mortgage City Hall West to do it. That, that's usually a sign that it's you know, not a, a financially good project. But then that you're going to also include in the legislation uh, two other city properties. Uh, I think this building, too, is located. The one you're removing is in Ham on Hampton, Correct. which is located, I think, in the might be in the 23rd Ward. I don't know if the 23rd is in the 24th. Uh, I wonder if the 24th Ward Alderman was discussed before they decided to mortgage a building in his ward uh, for an unrelated project. Uh, you know, this is all related to a, a long-standing project now that we have been passing legislation on uh, for years now. Um, during testimony in committee, even though it's not in this bill, even though most of the aldermen who are being asked to vote on this today weren't in the committee hearing and don't even know the value of this deal, uh, under questioning um, and at the request of the chairman to actually come back and not ask us to vote on this thing without some information, they finally came back and told us the total cost of this thing is probably going to be around $130 million. That's a lot. 
And what we've been told is that we are trying to preserve these jobs primarily because of the earnings tax revenue we generate from it. The earnings tax, gener earnings tax that we generate from it is about $2.4 million a year. What people need to understand is by simply just moving this project into this TIF area, right off the bat, the city's cut is half. So right off the tap, we cut it in half of what we normally get to general revenue. And so now we're talking about $1.2 million that we're getting in GR. So when you start adding up the numbers, um, $130 million is a really big investment uh, to preserve $1.2 million of earnings tax. We all want to preserve jobs, no doubt. But it also becomes about priorities and how best to spend that amount of money and in what area uh, and why are we selecting this area. And uh, I think it has more to do with other plans, uh, at least long-term plans, uh, starting off with the original developer, Paul McKee, around that area. That's why that area was selected. Um, but as we look at other parts of the city, what we know is that $130 million could do a lot of good in other areas. Um, and they would not involve what this project is. So what we are doing with this money is, number one, we are moving at least 200 city residents. We're moving them. We're buying out their property. These are mostly uh, lower income African American families that have been there for a long time. Uh, and we are mortgaging two city buildings to pay for moving them somewhere. We're just buying their property. Do they stay in the city? We don't know. Do they go to the county? Maybe. Uh, do they stay in the general ever area? Maybe. Uh, but in addition to the 200 residents, we're also moving out uh, a business that is worth at least $20 million that we have passed tax incentives in the past few years to support. So, uh, so with the amendment, uh, I probably will vote against the amendment because I really think it needs to be responsibly, it needs to be um, cut down to just the one building needed. Um, two is better than three, but it's still not one. Uh, and then I'll have some other comments later on the, on the board bill itself. All right, thank you. Any further discussion? Any further discussion on amendment number one? Any further discussion on amendment number one? Mr. President, I'd like to request a roll call on amendment number one. I'd request a roll call. Um, it's been moved by all of them from the 15th and seconded by all of them from the 25th that we amend board bill number 117. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. All the women Tyus. No. All the women Flowers. No. All the women Bosley. No. All the Moore. No. All the women Hubbard. Aye. All the women in Gracia. All the women Coulter. Aye. All the women Conway. Aye. All the women Ortman. Aye. All the women Vollmer. Alderman Villa? Aye. Alderman Onowitz? Aye. Alderman Murphy? Alderman Howard? Alderman Green? Aye. Alderman Berenger? Aye. Alderman Rohde? Aye. Alderman Kennedy? Aye. Alderman Davis? Aye. Alderman Spencer? Aye. Alderman French? Alderman Boyd? Alderman Vaccaro? No. Alderman Ogilvy? Aye. Alderman Cohn? Aye. Alderman Williamson? Aye. Alderman Carter? Aye. Alderman Cruzman? Aye. President Reed? Aye. Alderman Flowers? Aye. Alderman Ingracia? Alderman Murphy, Alderman Howard, twenty-two aye votes, five no votes. By your vote, you stay in the motion. Alderman from the fifteenth, and adopted amendment number one to board bill number one seventeen. With that, we're back to the board bill as amended. Um, any further discussion on the board bill? Any further discussion on the board bill? All the women from the fifth. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move for perfection of board bill 117 as amended. You don't have to 
make another motion is already moved and seconded and it's been amended so we're going to take up the current motion that's on the floor any uh any discussion on the board bill thank you uh the purpose of oh. board bill 117 is to facilitate initial funding for property acquisition and other costs associated with the assembly of approximately 100 acre site for the western headquarters of national geospatial intelligence agency um, basically what this bill does is authorizes the St. Louis Municipal Finance Corporation to obtain a loan either in the amount of $13 million if no other debt is refinanced as a part of the loan and $20 million if debt associated with 1520 Market Street is a part of the loan. Um, if NGA selects the site, the loan will be repaid through proceeds of the sale of the property to the NGA or a bond issue secured by one, a portion of the state income tax revenues generated by NGA, up to $12 million per year, and two, a portion of the city earnings tax revenues by the NGA, up to $1.5 million a year, which may be allocated from Northside TIF revenue after the NGA completes its project. Um, in addition to that, I'd just like to make some comments uh, about this bill in its entirety. I think that there's some misinformation out there. Um, when we look at uh, what's being put into this bill. Of course it is a lot of money, but that hundred and some million dollars, that's um, state money that, that will be allocated to the NGA site and um, I'm thankful that House Bill 515 permitted us to do that. What the city is putting in is approximately 13 million dollars. And these monies are um, required so that we can get total site assembly and to, to do some infrastructure, things that have to be in place prior to them selecting us if we are selected. In addition to that, I think it's important um, to understand that this practice of mortgaging properties, unrelated properties for a project, this is something that has been done before in the city. This is a process that um, is definitely sanctioned by the Comptroller's Office. Uh, they've done an excellent job in doing this in the past. We have an A-plus credit rating for that very reason, and I think that this was the most um, feasible means for us to go ahead and move forward with this project. Uh, early on there were suggestions about us getting the 13 million dollars from other, um, just from the general fund and, and I trust the expert, I, tr I trust uh, the Comptroller's office and everyone that's involved. They're saying that this is the best means to do that and um, there was some discussion as what was related to the amendment to where, you know, we may not need all three of these properties. and. You, that's why I supported them taking one of those properties out, and I believe that, that the other two weren't taken out because it's important for us to maintain our flexibility because we don't have a signed deal. And so at this time, I just ask uh, for everyone's favorable consideration of this. This is a, a very time-sensitive matter. Um, I think it's important to, to look at the money that's invested, to, to see how we're doing it, but to also look at the social impact that this will have on a community that has experienced 60 years of disinvestment. And so where it may seem like a lot of money, I believe that this is our opportunity to uh, right some wrongs of the past and to move North St. Louis forward. Thank you. All right. Alderman from 24th. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, I've spent some time uh, previously complaining about uh, really the miserable position uh, the federal government has put the city of St. Louis in in this case. Um, I'm not going to revisit that too much, but this is a, another, sort of the, another instance of uh, how clear it is that um, they've really kind of put our backs uh, against the wall. Um, so just to be clear, I mean, we're, what we're getting here is uh, a line of credit by pledging uh, either the title or the existing uh, debt payments uh, to 1520 market a building some of us call City Hall West, a uh, building the city effectively owns. Uh, a little bit of debt left on it, but not, not too much. Um, it's interesting that, you know, I, I point out that we're not actually 100% sure what we're voting on. Uh, on last Friday, a representative from, from Stiefel was here um, and was fairly informative, but he did mention that, look, we really don't know if we're pledging the title of the building as security for the loan or we're just pledging uh, future mortgage payments that we're already making uh, to the loan. Um, I, I think that's unfortunate. You know, I, I think we ought to we ought to be able to differentiate um, on what on what we're actually voting on. 
Now, I think, I think the idea that we borrow money uh, by pledging the buildings that we provide, the buildings where we house the employees who provide services to the residents of St. Louis, I mean, really, that's a very, we're going down a dangerous path, obviously. I mean, this cannot, this should not be the norm. It cannot become the norm. Yes, we borrow against buildings uh, occasionally, but it's usually to, to update those buildings themselves. And we should know that most, I mean, most of the debt the city takes on, we are not pledging assets to back up that debt. We're pledging tax revenue. Totally different scenario. Now, do I believe that we're ultimately going to lose the title to 1520 Market? No, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but we should be clear, look, if, if NGA selects this site, this will seem like a, like a great move, like we threaded the needle, like the city you know, pulled a rabbit out of a hat, um, and that's fine. If NGA doesn't select the site, though, which I think we spent a little bit less time focusing on in committee, we're, we're creating an additional $22 million obligation to the city over 20 years. So that, that's what sort of the, the cost-benefit um, analysis that Stiefel provided on Friday showed. We, we, there's a fair chance we're going to end up owning 100 acres that we don't have another buyer for, and we're going to have 20 years of debt on that property, and we're going to be making payments of roughly uh, $1.2 two million dollars or something uh, annually on that debt. So ser there's, there's certainly upside if NGA selects the site, uh, but there's a, there's a 22 million dollars of new liability to the city and city taxpayers if the NGA does not select the site, unfortunately. And, you know, my frustration um, with, with this approach is that we just went through the city's budget. Um, and at no point in the ways and means process did it come up that we were about to need a bunch of cash to buy property. And I, for the life of me, I can't understand um, why that is. You know, if this is, if this is truly critical, and I'm not saying it's not critical, but if it's truly critical, um, let's get real and let's live within our means and let's get the money out of our annual budget, or at least some of the money. You know, from, from going forward, from my perspective, going forward, every new category of expenditure and every expenditure we make uh, deserves a lot more scrutiny. Because if we have to borrow against the title of City Hall to get the money we need, we are not doing the fiscal job we should be doing. We are not managing the city's budget the way we should be managing it. If we can't come up with 1% of that budget in a timely way to do something important. Um, you know, to me, yeah, we're going we're gonna to try to pull a rabbit out of a hat here, but the, the way we're coming up with the money, um, you know, to me it, it's, just, it's just not acceptable. This, this can't be the norm in how the city of St. Louis operates. Um, and... I mean, we gotta we gotta get real. I mean, if, if you look if you look at some of the things we spend money on, um, it, it's it's time we we it's time there was real scrutiny on some of our expenses um, with it across the various departments and elected offices um, in City Hall. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All the one from the 19th. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. One of the things that I gleaned from the conversation when Stiefel was before the committee was clarifying to us exactly what we were doing. We are getting a line of credit. If we are not chosen for the site, we will not be using that money necessarily or we will only use what we need. But also we need to understand that 1520 already has a mortgage, and what we have done is combined the current mortgage and added the line of credit 
which is very much what some people do with a home equity loan. And so that's more familiar with simple terms for the average citizen to understand what we're doing. Also, one of the things that is very, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a how you do business, most especially in government and municipality business, is you have a capital budget and you have a general operating budget. And so your capital budget is kept separate and you do large types of operations through your capital budget. And your capital budget is where you would do deals like this if you had the funds available, but we don't in our capital budget. And so that's another reason why we're borrowing this money. We also don't have the money in our general budget because if anybody's been paying attention, most especially the last five years, we have been busy trying to get caught up on debt on pension funds, get caught up where we could at least provide some kind of raise because we didn't provide raises for four years and we furloughed our employees and we can go on and on. And then there were some of those years in the last five years that our revenue was lower than we expected. And so that's why you never attack a general budget, daily operating budget on that level of talking about taking $13 million out of it. Because another thing, too, that we didn't talk about just very briefly is we're required to have a certain amount, percentage of our general budget in reserves. And we have been barely, I mean barely, having that available. If you have a crisis in the city, where is the money going to come from? So that's why you borrow money. That's how every corporation, every municipality does it. You borrow money. But in this case, the comptroller's office was smart enough to cut a deal that really allowed us to now make a lesser payment on that building than we were previously making, and it includes the opportunity to have the line of credit. And so we honestly are not going backwards. We are actually going forward in that position with that building. And then the last thing about this deal is, as we move forward, we also have to recognize the fact that the state has provided $16 million of brownfield tax credits, which means that it allows us to continue to improve that site. And whether we get that deal or not, that is still a favor to us in having it prepared. And that $16 million is not tied, so whether we get the deal or not, we still have the brownfield tax credits to use on the deal. So there's a number of things there that I don't want to alarm residents that somebody is doing something that is jeopardizing the opportunity for us to do our business on, uh, on a daily basis without threat. We also have an, uh, an one more thing that we should also consider too. As, as we all have looked at this, I mean we've been going back and forth on this most especially the last year, uh, and it's had a lot of different uh, moving parts to it. Anytime you want to do large development, it's going to be like this. Uh, this is probably the largest one that most of the current aldermen have worked on. Uh, we only have right now, uh, I think about eight aldermen that have been here more than 10 years. So this is new, and I understand that. But this is how business is done. And uh, if you look at any other uh, jurisdiction, you'll find out that that's how they do business, whether it's a school board or whomever. But uh, I don't feel as though we're in jeopardy. I just think we're making the moves necessary in order to be prepared if we are selected, and you can't do it after you're selected because it takes too long and nobody wants to deal with you while you're trying to figure it out. They want to do business. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Alderman from the 23rd. I actually agree with everything the alderman from the 24th said, that $1.2 million is going to come out of our budget anyway. It always seems to get balanced against ward capital, which are sidewalks and alleys and things that we do in our wards to try to keep our streets together. I think that once again, here's something of just a lot of importance that we're getting to us. It only was in committee two weeks ago, or two meetings, been about two weeks, to make this kind of decision. And I'll still keep going back to the gener even the general obligation bond where we're not even going to meet the critical needs of the fire department that they put in the general obligation bond. I, I can't vote for this because I believe it would take a lot more time and a lot more thought before I could actually say this is a good idea. My track record on the last two, the concert and the uh, 
North Side Regeneration Project that I voted against both. My track record has been pretty good. But I haven't seen a lot of success. And I, I just don't feel overconfident in this. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I can't support this. All right. Alderman from 12th. Mr. President, members of the board, um, I mean, I am so confused. I feel like we have the tic-toe game out here. Uh, you know, I, I think we're asking a lot of the citizens and the public, if you, if you want to be realistic, we're asking them to pass a $180 million bond issue. Uh, we're asking businesses to raise the minimum wage or us to raise the minimum wage. And we're asking for a lot of things at one time. And, you know, what I hear down here, why aren't we raising money to have more police officers on the street? I mean, in my ward, crime has really went up along with the neighboring wards. And, and that's the complaints. I mean, I really got beat up the other night at a, at, at a hearing. You know, uh, if you vote for this bill, this guy has done nothing. The state's giving him money. The city's giving him money. There hasn't been no development whatsoever. What happens if they decide not to, to stay in the city of St. Louis, the mapping company? The city owns the land. I mean, you haven't had... Let's be realistic. Has there ever been a developer in the last 20 years to step forward to do something with the property? So, you know, I, I listen to all that. You know, we're asking a lot from the taxpayers because it is the taxpayers' money. And, and I think there's a lot of great ideas. Now, another thing is we don't make enough money to support a new stadium. So, I mean, you know, it's like, you know... Who's on first? What's on second? And I'm just being realistically, and this is what the constituents of my ward have relayed to me. Uh, they are totally against uh, against anything to do with Paul McKee right now. If it passes, they will not support the bond issue because they feel the city doesn't really need it if we're given $3 million. Uh, why do we need a bond issue? We need to pass something that gives more police protection, you know, updated this. Um, you know, then the, the other thing I hear from a wife of a police officer, well, the county pays $10,000 more a year starting salary than the city police department. So that doesn't help morale here in the city of St. Louis. And when you read about police officers getting indicted for having drugs and working with the, you know, the, the drug people, uh, you know, it just doesn't look good, period. So... You know, what do we do to rectify this? I think sometimes you put too many things on the table at one time. And, and I think you just have to take it a step at a time. What's the guarantee we have that the defense mapping company is going to stay in the city of St. Louis? I mean, you know, wouldn't it make more sense? And, and I'm not the smartest person in the world. I'd be the first to tell you. Let's see if they make that commitment first. I think that would be the most common sense approach, and maybe I'm wrong, but I'm just telling you that. I mean, I got beat up pretty good by my constituents the other night, and that was their concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? All the one from the all, all the one from the 28th. All the one from the first. Defer to you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, I'm going to vote for this bill, but I, uh, I'm really disappointed that we couldn't find this money somewhere else. We just had a $7 million block grant uh, reallocation. It seems to me we could have used some of that money for this. Uh, we had a surplus last year. It seems we could have used some of that money for this. Uh, this bill was, um, you know, first I heard about it was maybe it's two weeks ago by now or ten days ago. Uh, I do understand that we need to do whatever we have to do to keep the NGA jobs in St. Louis and I also understand that if you're trying to negotiate to buy people's properties with them that you've got to have the funds to pay them. Um, so I understand the need for that liquidity that the city needs to have in order to do this but I, I um, this is the only option before us right now, which is why I'm going to vote for it. But I wish that we would have considered other options, and I wish we would have known about this more than, you know, 10 days or, or two weeks ago. Um, so, thank you. All right. All the one from the first. 
Mr. President, members of the board, um, the older one from the 19th said there's only about eight people who have um, been here over a couple of years. I'm returned, but I, before that, I was here since 1991. Yeah, I and keep so, calling you um, I have, uh, there's only four people and the president, the former president, that were here before me. So I have got to see, I've got to see a lot of deals put together. Um, some of them I'm seeing coming back and smacking us in a, our face like a stadium deal because we don't do our due diligence or we on purpose don't do our due diligence because it's not things that were not brought up. This loophole that we have about the stadium was brought up over and over and over again. It's when I was a new Alder person and, and I sat on convention and tourism, which the deal came before, and we, so we purposely do these things. That's why people, I will never believe what the Alder woman from the 19th says, that people don't want to do uh, deals with us. Yes, they do, because we give everything away. We don't save anything. We don't look out for our best interests. We give everything away, and we say, oh, that won't happen. But what we really mean is that you people who are voting for it most likely won't be here to bring it up that it did happen. So uh, usually, though, there are a couple of people that are around to tell you about your past. This bill is probably one of the most duplicitous bills that I have ever seen in the 24 years that I've been dealing with the Board of Aldermen. Um, and that in, um, also includes the stadium, and it also includes when we expanded the airport, okay? Um, and I look at the things that we are told and how fluid things come out of people's mouths and how they changed. Um, I when I was off this board, I watched for years when, we were, when you guys were passing this bill and when the board was passing these bills about it, about this project, and it was, we're not going to have eminent domain. That will not occur. We will not do eminent domain. I heard that up until January the 24th when a board bill was introduced to do eminent domain. In less than three weeks after you had assured the people that we were not going to do eminent domain, we went from, oh, no, we aren't, to, oh, yes, we are. So in three weeks, we went and we passed eminent domain on people's property that we had assured. Who wants to believe us? We're big liars. We tell people what they want to hear to get it done, and then we move on. Um, so then we, we hear the bill in HUD, which I was sitting on at that time. Mr. Williams comes in, I ask him all kind of questions. Mr. Williams tells me the biggest bunch of untruths in the world, uh, okay, uh, starting with that we could not do options on the properties. Why would we be doing them in a domain? Oh, we could not do options. Funny thing is that when he came on the floor sitting right behind me with the Alderman from the 19th, uh oh, 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 now we can do options. I asked Mr. Williams why we were doing eminent domain on the people's property who pay taxes, but not on, um, and Otis Williams is who I'm talking about, so I want to get it straight, uh, um, uh, CDA, SLDC, the alphabets. I asked him about this option that uh, Mr. McGee, Paul McGee had on the uh, pruitt Igle site and uh, asked him why there was no eminent domain on that site. He told me it was because um, they didn't have to do it because we could get that property back anytime we wanted to, um, so we didn't need to do eminent domain. And he started telling me what it says. I don't like people to tell me what it says. I find that I can read pretty much as good as anybody in this building or better. And so I asked him in February if he would just give me a copy of that. He assured me he would get it over to me in a day or two. This is, what, Ju July 2nd, 3rd? I still don't have a copy. Called over a couple of times asking for it because I want to see it. I want to read it myself. If indeed that's what it says, if it should say, if it does say that, not only I but any member of this board of aldermen should be able to see it on our desk and we should be able to read it. We shouldn't have to tell other people who are trying to get a bill passed. We shouldn't have to let them tell us what something says because we can read and I most certainly can. We still don't have it, so I still don't believe him, and he's still not giving it to me. Now we come with this bill here. And I heard the older woman from the uh, fifth say, it's just $13 million. Hmm. I tell you, I, there's not an older person in here who couldn't just use that $13 million to uh, make their ward a better place to be. Um, before I left here, I was working on Natural Bridge because the city of St. Louis does not have uh, a good presence on Natural Bridge. I lived in South St. Louis for a lot of years, and I lived in Central Quarter for four or five years, South St. Louis for eight or nine years. And so I got very used to driving up and down Chippewa and in the South with all the things that they have to do. 
And no, when I got to North St. Louis, I was just appalled. I didn't grow up there. But that the things that we don't have, they started a missing campaign a few years ago, and I think I'm going to start it back out. Well, we don't have hardware stores. We don't have sit-down restaurants. We don't have this great great list of just things that people take for granted. Um, I built the first new school in North St. Louis in 30 years back in the 90s. We got the first new bank in 30 years back in the 90s. We got a Snooks, which uh, at that time we didn't have any Snooks. We only had Nationals. So that was the first. We didn't have, we never been able to have a diversity of grocery stores like I enjoyed when I lived in South St. Louis. We get to have one grocery store. It's a monopoly. And I pursued Snooks because I wanted there to be some diversity in North St. Louis. And I was just brokenhearted that once we got Snooks National sold to them. And so we still got one grocery store, basically. We do have, now we're starting, we got a, um, um, what is the uh, grocery store in your, in your ward? Uh-huh. No, what's the other grocery store? You got another grocery store. That's not, um, the one that's all these. We have all these. We have all these. And then the alderman from the 21st Ward, I think, has a, uh, a save-a-lot, I think, is uh, the stores that we have. But that's not uh, diversity. Um, we're building another, we're building a credit union, the first new credit union. With first, uh, see, so North St. Louis is so without things. And this is surrounding neighborhoods and wards that for years have been stable and in spite of everything else have held themselves together and been able to keep things nice. So when, you, when I hear somebody talk about just $13 million, let's just talk about what $13 million would do, not for one ward, not for the fifth ward, but just for the, the strip that calls itself Natural Bridge, have a plan to be bringing some commerce there. How many people would that serve there? How would you build that up? That doesn't make any sense. Um, and to tell you how long we, I was working on this, we started uh, Natural Bridge at the same time that Jack Garvey was the alderman then, he's a judge now, in the 14th Ward, what is now Chippewa and Kings Highway. It doesn't make any sense. We talk about just $13 million. $13 million maybe would cut the grass in the city. My constituents are looking at yet another holiday go by, and we don't cut the grass. We don't keep the property boarded up. We don't tear down the, pro uh, the problem properties. And I hear that some of the people on ENA said well, they don't want to spend any more money on cutting grass. I wish that their houses were next to it. Mine is not. But I wish that those people who don't understand that the citizens are not the ones that are still here and not the ones that created the vacant property problems, uh, the vacant property. They are the people who have to put up with it. They are the people who have to sit by it. And if the city cannot properly cut grass, they're cutting uh, properties once every six to eight weeks. And, I'm not, and I know it's raining this time, but I actually got down here thinking, well, if the problem was, we're just not turning it in. So I actually go out in my ward with my iPad, take uh, pictures, and run around and send in and say, you missed this one, you missed this one. They're not cutting the grass properly. They're not tearing down the buildings properly. They're not boarding up the buildings properly. So $13 million would do a lot, not for new things, but to just stabilize and keep people in the other areas where they have not left. We talked about earlier about what's wrong with the neighborhood around them, and um, the older woman from the, fifth, um, from the fifth said, well, the neighborhood has gone down. It has. It's gone down because the city let it go down, either purposefully or benign neglect. And that's what they're doing to other parts of uh, the city. They're letting it go down. They're not addressing what is wrong with uh, places where people already are. We are always chasing the new. We put all kinds of money downtown because we had to fix up downtown. We put all kind of money in the central quarter. We put all kind of money in certain places. And then we tell people, well, uh, other places are too hard. We can't get anything. Yes, we can. We don't try to. We just uh, decided that the central quarter in downtown was where the money was supposed to go, and then it's supposed to ebb out to the other uh, communities. And then there are other communities that we're not supposed to get anything. We're supposed to let it die until we get around to it. And then we say, well, that community is so bad now, we need to take that property and do something else. So what it does is it takes money from African Americans. When you let their neighborhoods go down like that, you're taking money out of their property. When you put uh, when you do downgrading and zoning and things, you take the money out of their pockets, and that's what we do often. That's how we do a, a kind of a discrimination against communities by letting them just sit there and rot and not giving the support that we're supposed to. 
I look at this bill and I'm reminded of when we were doing the airport and when we bought up a lot of land because we had to have this land in order to uh, build uh, uh, the runways and we also had to, uh, so we, we bought up a lot of land in Kenlock, in fact Kenlock almost doesn't exist anymore. Uh, the mayor who was out in, um, what was the city, uh, there was another city out there, uh, Bridgeton, uh, every week he was on the uh, news uh, talking about what the city of St. Louis was doing to his city. Um, and we, oh, we had to have this land, we had to, we needed all of this land. Well, I come back here, and then what I find out is in the year 2012 and 13, 14, we didn't need all that land. So we had all this excess land. We didn't give the land back to the people. We didn't say, oh, I'm so sorry, we didn't need this land. We didn't need it anyway. We were intent on destroying Kenlock and taking a big chunk out of bridge, and, and that's what we did. And now we're using that property to build a commercial development in which the people who had the land that should have enjoyed some type of uh, economic uh, prosperity from it did not get to do that. It is wrong. When, if we don't, uh, the alderman from the 24th talked about what happens if we don't get this? What happens if we don't get this? We will have done what we wanted to do under the guise and the pretense that we were going to get this, uh, uh, this site moved over here. We can say, well, we thought we were going to get it. In the meantime, we're spending money, we're taking the properties, we're buying up the properties, we're further uh, destroying the neighborhood, and then if we don't get it, we sit on it, we wait a little while, all these people will leave. We're going to uh, take the Board of Aldermen and it's going to go down from 28 to, uh, to 14. A lot of people are going to forget. Then we do just like what we did with the airport. We do something entirely different. We've already gotten it. We got it under the guise um, of doing something else. We talked about money that we're going to spend um, and that we, if, if we, our credit won't be affected because we won't borrow this money if we don't get this uh, if we don't get this, uh, in the, uh, the government agency to move. But the problem is that we're doing site preparation right now. That's part of this thing. So we have to start buying these properties because the people have already got off the letters. We're going to be tearing this stuff down. We're going to be doing site preparation, and that's wrong, okay? If we're really doing this just for this, then we ought to be waiting to find out what happens. But we're moving right along because we we're going to do that. Um, we got $16 million in brownfield tax credits. That's good. Now, that is a good use of what should happen. That is a good thing that should happen, but that can be used either way. That still doesn't have to be used uh, to be taking people's land and to have lied to them. We openly lied to the people when we said we weren't going to do this and then changed it and then expect us to now just go ahead and do it. And the people are supposed to believe us. Why? We said we got... How much money from the state? That's also good. That's good. Why can we get that money from the state for other projects that need to be done? When I first got back here, I went to uh, uh, CDAS, LD, before we joined it, uh, and I talked to CDA and, um, and the other alphabets over there about uh, finishing up what was supposed to be the Northside Shopping Center that got chopped up into 10 acres. I now have the 10 acres that used to be the 22nd Ward, and the 22nd Ward has the acres that I completed. And so I said, well, let's finish this. At least we can do another 10 acres. Let's do something. We don't have a hardware store. We don't have a Kmart, a Target, a whatever. We don't have anything, so let's finish it. And the city owns a lot of that land. And I was told by these very people who are now telling me to vote for this, oh, we don't buy property. Now, to Otis Williams' uh, credit, he told me that wasn't true. But the people who I talked to all said, oh, we can't do that. But it seems like we can only do that for certain things. We can do that for wards that touch downtown or wards that touch the central quarter. But actually to do something in North St. Louis, everything that I've done in my part of North St. Louis, it didn't just serve the people of what was then the 20th Ward and now called the first. It actually serves so many more people that I get people calling me saying, this is not big enough. We need this to be larger because they don't have it any other place in North St. Louis. I built a bank that was supposed to be a neighborhood bank. From the day that it was opened, it was just uh, overwhelmed, and it was too small. But it wasn't supposed to be the North Side Bank. It was, at the time we built it, it was the Mercantile Bank. It's now the, uh, the U.S. Bank. 
We don't have enough things in North St. Louis. And uh, if we, get, we only have limited money, it ought to be leveraged. If we got this kind of money, it ought to be leveraged to do the correct thing so that it is serving the most people. That is not happening here. Um, this thing about we're just going to keep proceeding on the uh, chance that we might get this thing, it's, it's interesting to me because I read this summer that the, uh, Illinois offered Scott Air Force Base for free. I don't know how we compete with I'm going to give you the land for free. It's already over there. It's already next to uh, an interstate. That is a hard compete. So for us to want to compete with giving the land away from free, we're going to have to give up so much that it is going to be hard to digest. Um, the other thing I don't understand why we're not more upset about it, maybe just people don't care, is that all of these things have come up about Mr. McGee in the paper and about his financial situation. And what was just really disheartening for me is to read in, that, uh, in these uh, reports that the former chief of staff said, Jeff Rankford, that he knew about these things. He knew about these things while we were debating these very bills for this Board of Aldermen. But they did not tell us how disrespectful and how we must dislike our own selves that we would let the Executive Office, Room 200, get away with withholding evidence like that while we debate finances. And then we just go on our merrily ways like, well, okay. We don't need 28 aldermen, really. We don't, we don't need 14. We don't need any if we keep doing this kind of things, okay? At some point, we need to have some respect. Either we're the a legislative body and we are dual respect to have things before us, or we might as well just have an executive body and get rid of all of us. We are dead weight. That is absolutely uh, unacceptable that you would know these kind of things and hold them. So the people who were here before me know that. They know the people who used to be here. If you had done that, I don't care if it was the mayor's ally. It would have, everything else you came would have sat right here. You cannot withhold evidence and say, yeah, we knew about that. That's something that's very important. So what else do you already know that you're not telling me? I can't have any confidence in what you're doing when this person who you were telling me was going to be part of this initial deal had such financial problems that now they've come to fruition. Banks are levying against the property and taking it, and we're just going along like, oh, no problem. The only thing that I could come up with, and that's because I've been down here long enough, is that the reason that the mayor's office didn't tell us is because they never intended for Mr. McGee to actually be the developer. He may recoup some money here and there, but the real intent is that they will then take somebody else, put in the deal, it will get through the Board of Aldermen, we will have uh, beat up Mr. McGee enough so that uh, they can with righteousness say, well, he shouldn't be in here, and then we'll put in some other people who we will not have vetted anyway, not that we do a hard vetting, but there will be no vetting, and um, it'll just be somebody else who already has this deal at hand. Um, and who will step in and do the rest of the deal. When um, this uh, prior uh, bill came before us, speaking about this, uh, not this board bill, but the one before that got passed, um, I asked Mr. Williams, because I had read that um, the Pruitt-Igo money uh, site could be worth $29 million uh, if sold, and that we had uh, sold it or put an option to Ms. McGee for $1 million. And so if that is true and somebody stands to make $28 million off of a deal, that's going to be very, very shameful, embarrassing. And actually, I hope somebody goes to jail if that is what is actually happening because that means that somebody inside is cutting the deal that had, should not be cut. Um, if there is some money to be made off of Pruitt Igo and the city has set up and held, held it all this time, and then somebody turns around and makes $28 million off of it, when this city is poor, I hope somebody goes to jail. Uh, as I said before, there is no way I was going to support this bill with the eminent domain anyway. Um, and then to just watch things pile up on it, and no matter what happens, we just keep chugging forth, we keep putting forth and saying that's okay. Um, this is a mistake. It's a financial mistake. It's a, a moral mistake. It's a moral mistake when we tell people we're not going to do something and then we do it. And then we say, well, we just got to do this. It is wrong. It's wrong to let people's neighborhoods fall down beside them, and they're paying their taxes, and they're trying to keep their property up, and then we come along with money. Before you can do new things, you ought to be able to uh, at least 
uh, stabilize some of the things that you already have. But what you keep doing is asking the people who are here who don't get a tax abatement, who pay their taxes, who live in their houses, and watch their property values sink. So you're stealing money out of them every year out of their pockets because property is how you earn um, a little bit of money. And so to watch all of this happen and then for them to be so frustrated and then for us to continue to do this and not make people answer hard questions is wrong. Uh, this whole thing about leveraging buildings, um, good for the alderwoman from the 15th for taking uh, the street departments out, but <coughs> I agree with Alderman from the 24th. If we actually have to do a part that we have an integral part of our city hall in, um, it may be creative financing to the comptroller or to the mayor, even to the president, but it's just wrong. This whole thing stinks to high he heck. And um, at some point, we're going to be sitting back and doing just what we're doing with the stadium, scratching our head and saying what a uh, fix we're in. And, you know, when people come to me and they are mad at the owners of the Rams of how he's treating us, I always take up for him and say, he didn't create that. We made that deal with Georgia Frontier. And it was not a good deal. And he's just taking advantage of the loopholes that we created, and that's what the business people are doing right now. They're taking advantage of loopholes that we, the Board of Aldermen, created, and the disrespect that we get from Room 200 that they can sit on information and not tell us, and we still pass things. I don't blame him. I wouldn't do it either, and I urge other people to vote against this. This is not a good deal for a variety of reasons, and the $13 million is just, uh, just really galls me. Um, when we don't have money to cut grass or the board buildings. All right, thank you. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Alderman from the fourth. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. Fifty years of disparity in the fourth ward. I wasn't going to say one word. I've been down here eight years. Before I got there, and you blame me for it. When I get up and pick up these pictures, everybody started making noise and raising hell about me picking up these pictures and showing you that we still live like this in this community. We're finding $2 billion for a losing football team that don't want to be here, and you hocking buildings. Shame on us that we live like this in this community. I'm going to put them on the floor. I wish that Jonathan hadn't retired. So uh, you can see what's going on in the fourth ward. This is where we live in the fourth ward. And you talk about Ball Park Village, the Gateway Arch, and we living in Squall Squallow like we living in third world conditions. It's been bombed out like a rat. Shame on all of you for voting for anything like this. And the people in the fourth ward, citizens of the city of St. Louis, snickering and carrying on and you vote for something like this and I, you can hock a building to cut my grass, 1,700 vacant lots, 1,400 empty buildings. We can find money for them losers, but we can't find money for the people in the fourth ward. We are tired of it. We are sick and tired of it. And this is what happened to my community. It's gone down. It's through. A black historical community. And we laughing and joking and carrying on about borrowing money. You can hock a building and straighten out my community, and I'm sick of it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman from the 4th. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Alderman from the 21st. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate the comments from the Alderman from the 4th, and I share his frustration. Um, when we talk to the folks in the development agency for the city of St. Louis, uh, while they spend so much time on deals like this, uh, there is no development plan for our main streets in North St. Louis. There's no development plan for Natural Bridge. There's no development plan for West Florissant, for Union. Um, so we're on our own. And so when we see deals like this, we do question the priorities of the city. Uh, we do question how we seem to find the resources for certain projects with certain developers uh, that are the priority of Room 200 but there are no resources for the needs of our folks. Um, so I want to first go back to some of the things that were said today and, uh, and really highlight one thing that I don't think has been said enough. What we are borrowing this money for is to buy land and property. What I don't think enough people are aware of is that many of these properties we already owned. 
We owned them just 24 months ago. We owned them for many, many years. We think and we've been told that that is the function of LRA, to acquire and land bank for major development. And what the mayor and uh, his folks down in SL and the alphabet soups over there, LRA, did was work out a deal with a single developer, Paul McKean, uh, sold him hundreds of city-owned lots and properties for pennies on the dollar. Now we find ourselves having to borrow money, and because the land is not worth what we're paying for, we have to mortgage city properties to buy back that land that we once already owned. Now that's crazy. That's just crazy. Um, and the fact that we find ourselves here at this point in time, knowing that this deal has been going down for a while, knowing that we've already passed legislation down here uh, in support of it, and that owner, Mr. McKee, still has not agreed to sell those properties. The uh, city and McKee still have not come to terms on how much we are going to pay for those properties. This is all stuff that needs to be worked out before we pass legislation. We need to know how much we're going to pay for it. We need to know if somebody is about to make a profit off of the land that we had in the first place. Um, the other thing, too, is that, you know, the reason that I'm most upset about this particular project is because of all the vacant areas in the city. We own so much land. Uh, we have so many areas. I never think it's a need to move people out, um, especially homeowners who don't want to leave. And I don't know if they were informed about this process, particularly with Board Bill uh, 117, but they came down before uh, when we passed legislation authorizing the use of eminent domain in that area. And a lot of those homeowners came down, many of them were seniors, uh, and they were really frustrated that their city would treat them this way. And so we've authorized it, uh, even though promises were made in the past that we would not do that. I've got a letter here dated October 3, 2008, it's a letter written and signed by the mayor. Uh, it was addressed to the then alderwoman of the 5th Ward, Alderwoman Ford Griffin. And it states, a lot of rumors and misinformation have been circulating about my position on development and redevelopment in that ward. And it goes on to say that I want to make clear where I stand. And it gives a lot of bullet points. The fourth bullet point says clearly, I will not support eminent domain for owner-occupied properties. And that's where we find ourselves a few years later. There are owners who have expressed in the media, they've expressed down here, that they don't want to go. This is their home. This is where they have grown up. Their grandparents are there. Uh, they have history there. And now we find ourselves not only, as a previous bill, authorizing eminent domain, but now going through the extraordinary means of financing that possible eminent domain by mortgage and city properties. And that's just crazy. Uh, this particular area has already, and this particular developer, has already received, God, more subsidy than I've ever known a developer to ever get. We're talking about $400 million in TIF. We're talking about $40 million in tax credits received. Not one house redeveloped, not one house built. We thought maybe he used the $40 million to pay the loans that he used to buy the buildings. Apparently not, because... He's losing those in foreclosure, not just in this area, but also in St. Louis County and across the river, other side of the river. Uh, this is not a developer who's in a very good financial position and not in a position to make any promises. And frankly, is in no position at all to make any demands against the city on how much he's going to charge us to buy back the land we just gave him. But yet he is. Um, a comment was made earlier that this is how business is done. And unfortunately, that is true. That is too often how business is done in the city of St. Louis and down at City Hall. It is crazy that we just received this bill a couple of weeks ago. It's not a surprise that they needed money to buy this property. It's not a surprise to anyone that they needed to uh, have some financing in order to be able to acquire much of those uh, land and businesses over there. As, as I mentioned, one business in particular alone is going to cost the city $20 million to relocate. That's a successful business in our city. And what does the city say in return for them uh, investing in that community over there? Uh, get out. Move somewhere else. So that we are just getting this information now, and even on the committee still has not received the information that we really needed to make an informed decision. 
uh, we asked for a detailed cost-benefit analysis. What we got was uh, a couple of pieces of paper that really had uh, a pro slant to it. And one thing that was not included on there that really is key information is how much tax gener are we generating in that area right now? We've got businesses there now. We've got people there who work, who pay earnings tax, who pay property tax. This new development will pay no property tax whatsoever. And no matter how much we spend in that area to prepare for the federal government, the federal government has said what they're going to pay for it. We can spend $130 million to prepare that land, but they're only paying 14 for it, period. Take it or leave it. So you know, to say this is a um, bad deal, to say that it is uh, a deal where we don't have enough information to make an informed, proper, responsible decision uh, is an understatement. It's an understatement. And what we still are not answering, and the auditor from the 24th alluded to it, is what if we don't get it? Because the, it is a very good chance that the NGA will select another site. In fact, the St. Clair site, uh, which is in uh, Illinois and uh, in a district of a much respected, powerful congressperson over there, uh, they're preparing that land. It's ready. It doesn't take all this stuff, and they're giving it away for free. So the federal government is going to be, it's kind of hard-pressed for them to say we're going to take on additional $14 million or whatever of, uh, of taxpayer money to go to uh, this site. And most of the tax incentives that the state has provided, um, also uh, the county sites that which we are competing with also qualify for it. So outside of the brownfield tax credits, uh, much of the other tax incentives from the state, uh, the state isn't picking a winner in that. They're saying the county can do it, the city can do it, whatever. So there's no guarantee that we're going to get it and we're not necessarily in the, uh, uh, in the front running. And what we do know is it's going to cost more than any other property. It's going to relocate businesses and people, which other, which other uh, areas don't have to do. Uh, and so we need to be very careful because at the very least, if we do take on this additional $13 million in debt, from this board bill, then it is going to cost the city, um, I think Alderman from the 24th said, about $20 million over the long run. Um, but what people also need to understand is that also included in this deal is $15 million that was included in the GO bond question that will be put before voters in August. So that's another $15 million uh, there, which is being counted in that $130 million. So the city's part will be at least uh, nearly $30 million. So I don't think anybody has enough information. Uh, I, I think um, it is intentional that we are given these bills with just days to pass it. Uh, it happens all the time, and it's a pattern I wish would change down here. I've introduced a bill uh, that I hope will pass this session that requires fiscal notes on bills. Um, I think most legislative bodies would laugh at us that we would pass something like this without a fiscal note. We'll pass something like this without any detail about how much it would cost. Uh, that's a little crazy. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman from the, from the 11th. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I would like to inquire the uh, Alderman from the 21st, if I could, please. Alderman from the 21st, will you yield to the Alderman from the 11th? I'll always. Alderman from the 11th, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Alderman, do we, have we in the past borrowed against city properties for collateral to, to loan money? Have we ever used city buildings as collateral? Yes. What, in what instance was that? The, uh, the examples that were given, um, uh, one example, for instance, was the Renaissance Grand Hotel. Um, to do that project, the convention center, I believe, was mortgaged. That's probably not the best deal that we want to replicate. <laughs> well, let, let me just, just say that to, to call the Renaissance Grand Hotel uh, fiscal folly would be complimentary. Yes. I mean, that, that blew up in everyone's face, including Kimberly Clark. The bonds went bad, uh, the street collapsed, and, and a partridge in a pear tree. And, and to draw an analogy, uh, gentlemen, I'm not so sure that we don't have blinders on. When, when the deal 
looks like a bad deal, chances are it's a, it, it's a bad deal. And again, I don't purport to be able to come down here on Friday mornings and micromanage St. Louis Development Corporation. And, and we, I think, collectively are at a disadvantage when we're not able to participate in the committee hearings because you belong in two other places at the same time. Having said that, that's our system. It's been that way, way a long time. So I, some of my questions, uh, if I ask them all, are, may, may impress you as being stupid, but that wouldn't be the first time, would it, Alderman? The question? No. My, no. my question is being stupid. It wouldn't be the first time. No. Um, it is the, the ordinance calls for the ground to be environmentally clean. Have we went down there? Anybody went down there with a shovel and looked to see if, in fact, it's contaminated? Uh, there are several sites that are contaminated, which is why the area qualifies for brownfield tax credits. Well, they're, they're nice, but I, I will tell you that there's 56 acres at the corner of uh, St. Louis County and St. Louis City at River de Pere, and that was Cronlet Coke, which was in fact a polluter. Mm -hmm. But that's cost collectively all of us some $11 million to clean up that ground, mm -hmm. and that was 56 acres. So I, I hope we may or may not have, have learned from that, that particular uh, experience. Uh, if I understand the money that we may borrow against 1520 Market Street, the, the ordinance says that we're, we're, we're able to provide the first mortgage on the city's fee simple interest. So that means that we have not borrowed against that particular building. Is that correct? Correct. We already owe on that particular building. And and we are the will we have, is the is our ownership of that imminent? Uh, I believe we are slated to pay off the six to seven million dollars that we owe currently on that building within the next five six years. Okay. And then we get to so so. Tell me what we're going to do there. We're just we're going to take an accordion and and expand. Uh, that loan out till, well, I won't be here. I don't think I'll be here in 2040 something. Is that correct? Your understanding? Yeah. The idea is to, um, if we owe six or seven million on it right now, we will borrow 20, pay off that six or seven million dollar loan on that, and then use the other remaining part uh, for this project. Okay. Uh, so so we're, we're borrowing a page from. Uh, we're borrowing a page from the, the governor's two-person committee that simply is taking existing debt and putting a huge rubber band on it and just spreading it out without checking with anybody. I, I think uh, Room 200 and some others have found a new financing method that they're using a lot now, which is uh, to say that it's not new money, it's current money, we're just going to extend it out a lot longer. So yes, it's just like the stadium uh, shenanigans. Uh, Alderman, is, is it fair for, for, for me to ask you, and the committee may have, may have dealt with this, and again for that, that I apologize, um, how much, how much uh, ground does the north side regeneration own? Is that a fair question? Of the 100 acres? Oh, of the total area? That's a good question. I, I think in number of parcels, they had it broken down. Uh, and it was a, a little over 50% when they started this deal, maybe 60% of the total parcels. Now, within the time between when they started this legislation and now, they have lost 40 of those properties on foreclosure. And so that's a second owner now we have to deal with. And for those 40 properties, that second owner uh, reportedly paid $3.2 million for 40 uh, uh, practically worthless vacant lots. So we will probably have to pay at least that. Well, you're, you're saying practically worthless, but they're about to get unpractically worthless. Uh, they're going to be pretty valuable in a minute. Right. There, there's gold in them, nor hills, as we used to say. Um, I, I guess, d did you understand the newspaper articles as it related to Titan Fish and what they bought back from uh, Mr. McKee's operation? I read the articles. Um, I think I understand them. <laughs> All right, well, for someone that's a little slow and has a GED from Cleveland High School, what happened? 
So Mr. McKee had borrowed money to purchase a lot of property, including land in this area. He had not paid that loan back. The owner of that note defaulted. Wait, Mr. McKee didn't pay a loan back? It's shocking, I know. He did not pay that particular loan along with several others. So the original owner of the note found a buyer for that note. They got some number on the dollar. That new entity that owns the note now was called Titan Fish LLC, somewhere out of the Kansas City area. They called in the note. Mr. McKee couldn't pay, so they foreclosed on those, and then they themselves purchased those properties, and they paid $3.2 million for them. But does Mr. McKee or Mr. McKee's operation still owe money? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, do you have any reason to believe that he's making the payments on the ground that he still has title to? I have no reason to believe that he's current on his loans. Did our housing committee inquire as to his existing financial status as it relates to this proposed hunk of ground? We received no information about the current state of his loans. No. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. President, could I briefly speak against the perfecting motion on this proposed ordinance? A couple of things. If this were your money, would you do it? I have no personal animosity against Northside Regeneration. As a matter of fact, I asked who the principals were. It's an LLC. I don't even know who the principals are. Having said that, the track record of certainly one of the principals is miserable, and I get my information from the newspaper, which probably may not be the very best source. But we're dealing with an individual that lost property in Shiloh, lost property in Hazelwood, is not paying a faculty for a school he started X number of years ago. They have filed suit. So his legal fees have to be pretty much up there. I just don't understand, for the life of me, when you're dealing with someone who has a track record of abysmal failure. He has a track record of abysmal failure on putting these things together, or more importantly, just not paying people. And, you know, sometimes we can't see the forest through the trees. If we had known then what we know now, we probably would not have put all our eggs in the basket of the Renaissance Grand Hotel. I think the art is out of room 200. And here's a scary thought for you. I was the director of intergovernmental operations for Mayor Harmon, so I was involved in some of those proceedings. And, you know, the line was, get it done. Well, does that sound familiar here? You know, you don't get it done if, in fact, you're going to get dunced. And it would really bother me for remuneration of any type to be given to someone who simply never pays anybody. And when questioned, you know, if you ask the administration, well, he's the only one doing anything up there. Well, this is, you know, I just worry that we're going to walk this proverbial financial plank, and I think it's going to snap off on it. Having said that, am I a bit hypocritical to tackle the sentiments of the lady from the 28th? I certainly want to see the geospatial agency stay in the city of St. Louis. But I think we have to ask ourselves, at what cost? We have to ask ourselves, does this just fail a good common sense test? And, Mr. President, I just think there are innumerable unanswered questions, particularly as it relates to the financing, and I don't think we should even begin to attempt to deal with someone and reward them financially because of his past transgressions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. McKee. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. McKee. Thank you, Mr. McKee. Thank you, Mr. McKee. Thank you,
Thank you, Mr. President. All right, thank you. Alderwoman from the 20th. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to ask the Alderwoman uh, from the 5th to yield uh, for questioning. Alderwoman from the 5th, will you yield for questioning to the Alderwoman from the 20th? Sure. Thank Alderwoman you. from the 20th, please proceed. Thank you. Uh, uh, Alderman, or Alderwoman from the 5th, uh, if this bill uh, does not go through today, uh, will we lose the ability to uh, retain NGA in the city of St. Louis? It's my understanding due to the tight time constraints that we are on with the federal government that they've placed on us that it will put us in a very unfavorable position. Uh, with uh, the negotiations that are currently underway, uh, will one developer, namely Paul McKee, stand to, to, to gain financially profit in any way from the negotiations that are currently underway? Um, clearly, I'm not an a employee of SLDC, and I'm not in those negotiations. And I, I think what the focus needs to be, I, I understand the, um, the passion and some of the concerns, but this is not about Paul McKee. This is about NGA. This is about a billion-dollar development. This is about keeping 3,000 jobs in the city. And I know, you know, somewhere in that people have some, um, some concerns about uh, Paul McKee, but um, that's not who I'm here to defend. I'm here to defend the people of the Fifth Ward in North St. Louis who need some development in their community. And I can appreciate that, and I'm glad that you are pushing for positive development in your ward, especially in this area that has seen decades of disinvestment. But that being said, with all due respect, this bill very much is about Paul McKee because a large percentage of the funds that we're uh, pro uh, proposing to refinance will be used to pay him for the property that he currently owns. Is that correct? Well, ma'am, that's a question I think that you can hold to SLDC. They're in those negotiations about what um, – his fee will be for the parcels. I mean, I know it was a very complicated situation. He received a lot of property through LRA, but I mean, I'm just not in on those conversations. And just as they um, met with the Alder Woman, with Alder Woman Green, I'm pretty sure that they'll meet with you. Or if you all would like to uh, meet with Paul McKee yourself and get some handle on exactly what those negotiations are, you can. I'm not in a capacity to answer to what his profit will be, if any at all. So uh, it's my understanding that we are currently negotiating with him um, and that when he decides to no longer negotiate in good faith, uh, we will be uh, uh, ready to utilize a recapture clause and eminent domain. Is that am I, is my understanding correct? Well, what's that? correct is if anyone within inside the NGA footprint um, if we're not able to negotiate properly with them and reach an agreement, then that bill will then come back before HUDS, which I believe you're a member on that committee, and HUDS will have to exercise eminent domain. And are we, are we at the point now where we're willing to do that and move forward with those options? I can't speak to that. Once again, like I said, I'm not in on those conversations. I know that there are a lot of negotiations with a lot of the property owners. Um, it's my understanding that Paul McKee is willing to sell his property. What those numbers are, I have no idea. That's a SLDC question. My priority would be to, uh, to negotiate in the most fiscally responsible manner possible uh, with a developer who has clearly failed our city in many, many ways. Uh, and so it would be important to me to ensure that we're moving forward in the most fiscally responsible way with that one, the largest single developer of that site. And so for me, I would want to see that we are uh, willing to employ eminent domain. I have I've received uh, uh, a guarantee from SLDC that we are, uh, which is uh, favorable for me. Um, and I'd like to make sure that we're moving forward with this. Uh, so it's my understanding that uh, the plan is uh, to recapture the, uh, all the properties. The first, the plan would be Im immediately to recapture uh, the, the properties that Paul McKee and the Northside Regeneration currently owns uh, within the footprint. And then we will wait until NGA decides whether or not to move forward before we go forward with anything else. Is that true? Is that, is, am I, is my understanding correct? I'm, I'm not privy to that, uh, that strategy. Like I said, SLDC or, or Room 200 could probably answer that. I, I can't answer that. What this bill is about is the $13 million that we're trying to uh, acquire through a line of credit to move forward. Now, the intricacies of what someone paid for something, what they're going to get compensated for something, I don't even understand why we're discussing it. I understand that you're concerned about it, but that's really outside of what this board bill in its entirety is about. I don't think that I'm in a capacity nor others are in a capacity to 
at this level question exactly what someone is going to get. I don't think we're there yet, but if, if you are concerned about it, like I said, you can contact Room 200 or you can contact Otis, and, and they could get into those details. And legally, I don't know really what right we have to say exactly what someone will pay for something. I mean, there's legal ramifications with that as well, so I don't know. Well, I respectfully disagree because to me the most important thing here is that we are, if we're planning to mortgage our second city hall building, that we're doing so uh, with uh, extreme caution and uh, with the understanding that uh, no developer that has clearly failed our city is going to stand to gain financially from these transactions that we are mortgaging our city buildings for. So to me that is, an, that is very relevant to whether or not we decide to mortgage our city buildings to move forward. Um, I would like to echo uh, 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 some previous sentiments that I am disappointed that this is the only way that we can move forward. I do believe that our city should have more financial elasticity built into our system. Uh, this is, represents 2% of our operating budget. Uh, you know, with my aldermanic salary, that would be the equivalent of me having to to mortgage a $750 payment on something, and I certainly don't operate my personal life in that way, and I would like to see our city uh, act with more financial elasticity and responsibility to be able to, to move forward with uh, uh, financial decisions in ways that we don't have to, to mortgage our city buildings for. Um, my background is in mathematical financial modeling, so I'm familiar with these types of analyses. Uh, I have to echo uh, previous statements that this is a disappointing amount of information to present to the board and the public. I'd like to see this change moving forward. Um, uh, that being said, this is 3,100 jobs. Uh, they are currently housed at a site that's just five blocks from where I live. Uh, right across uh, the, the street from my ward. Uh, many of, of my constituents and my neighbors work at NGA. They are high quality jobs, they're secure, um, uh, they are very, it's a very good place to work and I do believe uh, with our unemployment rate in the city of St. Louis being almost three times that of the national average, this is, can, retaining jobs should be a top priority for our city. Uh, the fifth ward, as you probably know, has an unemployment rate of four times the national average. It's 23.5 percent. Uh, retaining and attracting jobs to our city should be our utmost and top priority. Um, and so from that perspective, uh, it, is a, it is a scary proposition to think about losing 3,100 jobs. Um, but I would like to see moving forward more community involvement in the process more information to the decision makers here at the Board of Aldermen. I have been grossly disappointed with this process. I'm extremely frustrated to even have to vote on this today. Um, and, um, and, and I suppose that's the end of what I have to say about it. Thank you. All the one from the first. Mr. President, members of the board, um, I would wonder if the alderman from the 21st would yield, please. Alderman from the 21st will yield for question until the alderman from the first. Absolutely. Alderman from the first, please proceed. Um, alderman, um, in, um, since you are continuing to be on the HUD, in the conversation that, about this uh, particular board bill or any other conversation over the last few years, and especially since we know that Mr. McGee is not going to be able to probably hang on to this. Has there been any conversation about replacing Mr. McGee as a developer that you know of, or what we would do if Mr. McGee just uh, cannot hold on to any other properties except for the uh, pruitt Igo, which I guess he can since we did not blight that with him in the domain? So we haven't had a discussion at HUD's, I don't believe, about uh, removing Mr. McGee as a developer yet, although I have heard comments from the mayor's office uh, in public and representatives from them speaking that Mr. McKee may not be the developer that finishes the project. Um, and in a, uh, one of the HUD committee meetings related to this bill, um, uh, Otis Williams from SLDC did mention that if uh, Mr. McKee um, wasn't agreeable to terms to purchase these properties, that uh, the city may uh, move to use eminent domain against him, which would be crazy. Um, but, okay, and I'm trying, I thought we put eminent domain on all the properties except for the uh, Pruitt-Igo site already, so they're saying that they would actually then come in 
and use them in a domain against those sites. Oh, no, no. Let me, let me, let me make clear here. So while this deal, the NGA deal, originally was a Pruitt-Igo deal, I, I, I know that. this currently does not involve Pruitt-Igo at all. So it's still included in the development area, but the project has now moved to uh, uh, well, the north of Pruitt-Igo. And so even after this development, Pruitt-Igo still sits there. But now, I thought, so the properties that we're talking about, the McKee owns, is not the option he has on Pruitt-Igo. It's over uh, several hundred uh, other LRA, formerly LRA-owned properties. So we would take his other properties, but we would let him keep Pruitt-Igo while we developed all around him, making his value of Pruitt-Igo now. And the reason why I know this is I have a friend who used to own right at the corner of where now the Snooks building is. He used to own that whole property. And the city made the mistake of uh, he bought it very cheaply. And then the city built up all around him. And then he made a whole bunch of money when they... The older woman was the seventh, blighted it with eminent domain, not thinking that we put $200 million around him. And so he made a bucket load of money because we increased his value. The same thing we do with people when we don't do anything around their houses and we de decrease their value. So if we let Mr. McKee keep this month, this pruitt Igo option, and we build up all around it and we don't take that, then he takes the value of what we've done around that. Is that what would happen? Correct. And which makes it so puzzling that he has not come to uh, terms yet on selling those existing parcels, other parcels. Because even if he just gave it back to the city at what the city paid for it, he obviously would stand to gain from the, uh, the neighboring LRA property, uh, the Pruitt Igo site, which he has a very favorable option on. Well, um, and I, I don't know, have you seen this option? Because Mr. Williams told me back in February that he was going to provide it to me, and I've still not seen it. He wanted to tell me what it said, but I still just like to read myself. Have no, you seen a copy? We, we haven't been given any, uh, any of those contracts um, that involve any of those properties that McKee purchased from the city. Only thing I know is what I've read in the media, which is what you read, which is I think it was about a, a $1 million or so uh, option that he got on that, as you say, valued at $30 million property although it does require a lot of remediation. But now we have brownfield credits that could potentially be used there. I know, what I know is that if you build around me and I still have the property and you put 300, 200, whatever million dollars around me, the property that I have, I'm happy with you, okay? Even if you am in a domain and take my other property, that all goes to the value of that big parcel of land right. that I have, okay? And that, so and, and I'm not is, unhappy with you. And that's something that the uh, homeowners in that area will not benefit from because they are being removed, uh, so they won't be there to, uh, to profit or, or reap any of these benefits. Now, I want to go back a little bit because the uh, president brought in um, uh, an amendment when I was there. And in the amendment, we said before we do, the committee agreed that before you do, eminent domain, which I disagreed on, but I want to understand this, before we do eminent domain, that we, not, not a bill, but a resolution would have to be brought, and then the resolution would have to be passed for each parcel, and I can't remember this, was it the parcel of only inhabited parcels, or was it all eminent domain? Can you remember that? Do you remember? That's a good question. I can't remember that. I don't know okay. if it specifically said uh, occupied or if it was all. I think it was all okay. in the domain, but um, don't quote me on that. Okay, but, but I, I do remember we didn't have a process of it being a board bill. It was going to be a resolution, which I would suppose that the fifth ward alderwoman would be the person that would bring in since it's in her ward, and then they would have to be done at, separately, as I understood, although I guess nothing prevented in the amendment from bundling, but they would have to come in and we'd have to actually be able to have been in the, we'd have to already have an agreement before we were going to come back and do eminent domain on whatever parcels, be it occupied or unoccupied. Is that correct? Correct. That was the, uh, that was a provision that uh, the president put in. I think it, it gave uh, the homeowners over there a certain amount of insurance. Um, yes. Now, well, keep, go, okay. go ahead. I respectfully disagree with that last part. It, it was better, but we should have had some kind of sunset clause on it or something that said, if this doesn't happen, that we don't come back later, because I've been around long enough to know that they come back later when nobody's around, and if you don't have anybody to tell you what happened, then you don't know. 
okay? Yeah. Um, the alderman from the 11th talks about the hotel, and you, you, you gave him the fodder for that. You guys should take that act on the road. That was good. Uh, I did vote no for, against that also, okay? The unions were in an uproar about it, but then when they came back, and we voted again on this, they were on the other side because now we already had the jobs and so we have to give them some more money. So often down here, we push through things that are horrible and then the people who were against it, if now that they're on board and they get what they want, they don't care about what happened in the past. So that's what happened. And when I asked the union guy, what if we were taking the union out, then he said, well, we would still want you to be against it. So it's, it depends on whose ox is being gored. Um, so I appreciate that. To, to your, uh, if Thank I can you. make one thing, to your sure. point about sunsets, I, yeah. I agree. And I think uh, a sunset provision should actually be added to any bill related to this NGA project because if we don't get the NGA and all, and we're doing all this stuff in the name of the NGA. Correct. Uh, and we don't get it, then we actually have done it for Mr. McKee and another, and our future developer. Oh, and that's what we're doing. And I'm saying that's what we did with uh, the airport. That's what we did with the football uh, con convention. That's what we do all the time. Um, the older woman from the 20th said about how she wants it to go forth. I will tell you that you can go back and look at past board. We started uh, taping this board, I think, in 92, 93. And you can go back, and the same thing you're saying now, we were saying 22 years ago. The very same thing, um, that we need fiscal uh, responsibility, that we need more time. Um, the alderman from the 11th, who used to be my president when I came here and was also been a state rep, often talked about, you know, fiscal responsibility and also, uh, asked me about uh, having some kind of a... Uh, attachment that would talk about how does this affect, affect, affect us fiscally. Nobody has ever wanted to do that except when it, they're mad at something. But holistically as the Board of Aldermen to do that, no matter if it's Sharon Tyus's bill or whoever, we've never been able to agree and we should have that because I believe that they do that at the state level and because we don't really want you to know. We want you. And also that thing about uh, waiting and coming at the last minute, that's so you got to do this. It's got to be done. So 20, 24 years I've been dealing with this, and 24 years it's been done the same way. And until we say no and we're willing to take whatever happens, they're going to always have enough people who say, but these are the jobs. I want to say to the Alderman from the 20th that just as important as you think the jobs are for those people around you, the people who have been in their homes for all those years, they think it is just as important. Um, I talk to them all the time because I've been rehabbing down there. I'm a rehabber for a lot of years, and they have hung on to everything no matter what the city has not done, okay? And I see the city doing the same thing to my community. My community was upper middle class, middle class black people that they destroyed in 2001, and they're doing the same thing. And they bring people in, and they, they do anything they can to destroy a black community, and then they come back later and say, well, this has no value. And so these people are going to fight to the end. And I, as I said before, I don't really believe that we're going to get it in GA. I believe that we are going to use that to do all of these other terrible things and then say, well, we didn't get it, but we got everything done. Because to the point about having a sunset clause, we don't have it any place in here. We don't have anything that says, if this doesn't happen, then we give this back. And we have never done it. So we use development. It, we're deceptive with it, okay? And if your mother or family had been told for all these years, we're never going to use, we're not going to use them in the domain, and then they come back and say, oh, we got these jobs and we're going to do it, that, of course, you want to keep your jobs. I want to keep jobs in here. I want to keep uh, the tax base here, okay? But that just has never happened. So, again, I rise to say that this is a duplicitous bill. It's, uh, um, it, it's not fair to the people. It's not even a, a good financial uh, uh, bill, and the only thing that makes people vote for it, what I'm hearing, is that we got to try to keep these jobs. And when we don't keep these jobs, I want to know if we're going to be willing to come back and say we want to uh, rescind this bill and we want to get rid of it and we want to treat the people fairly in there because that's what we ought to be doing is getting rid of it. I don't, even if we got to step on automatic courtesy, then that's what we ought to do because we ought to get rid of this. If we don't get this, then we should get rid of all of this because that is not fair for us to treat people like that. These are citizens that have been here for a long time. Thank you, all the one. Any further discussion? All the one from the 15th. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I guess what I have to say is I'm, I'm very torn on this today, um, and I'm torn on it from a variety of standpoints. Um, 
you know, you hear from one side that if we don't move forward with this, if we don't authorize this financing, then this deal is dead. And, you know, I, I have quite a few people who work at NGA who live in the 15th Ward who I want to stay in the 15th Ward. And, you know, they've made it pretty clear to me that they would, um, that they, they want to stay there as well. The other side of this, though, comes down to trust. And I think that's, that's the underlying um, kind of elephant in the room for all of this, is do we trust the information that we've been given? Do we trust that we have been given all the information that we need? Do we trust that we have debated this out enough in committee in order to get a bill that is going to protect um, the taxpayers of the city of St. Louis and um, as well as the homeowners in the fifth ward, the businesses in the fifth ward? Um, and, and that's what... And, and that trust issue is what keeps nagging on me. Um, you know, one of the first votes that I took here, one of the first, uh, I guess, contentious votes that I took down at this board was um, against authorizing uh, eminent domain use um, that kind of has, has allowed this process to continue to go forward. And so I stand here today thinking, well, if I am, if I am to be aligned with that vote that I took you know, four months ago, six months ago, however long it was, then I should be voting against this today. The other part of me, you know, doesn't want to be that person that, that shuts down the possibility of having all these, of retaining these jobs in the city. But then that goes back to the question of, you know, do we really think that we, we are going to get this? Do we really think... Um, that we've had the information to really make an informed decision um, about this, and and I'm not sure. I you know I want to echo some of the the aldermen from the 24th words earlier today that I think we need to be more fiscally responsible. We don't we're not transparent in the deals that we're making. We're not being transparent in. Um, to the taxpayers, and even as a new alderman trying to wrap my head around all of all of this, I'm just not, um, I'm still not positive that we have, we have looked at all of our options in order to get this done and also not put the city um, in jeopardy in terms of our, our financial situation. So I've really appreciated the, the dialogue that's happened today and, um, and I'm still not exactly sure where I, where I'm at. Um, but I think that this trust issue is what's, you know, really nagging at me to, to vote no today. Um, because I, you know, I saw after that last vote how, you know, all of a sudden all this other information turned up after we made that vote. And so how do we know that that same situation is not going to happen today where we think we know what all of our options are and then suddenly we take this vote and two weeks down the road we, you know, we're confronted with all this other information that, that we didn't know existed or had asked for and hadn't been presented with. And, and so, so I'm not really sure that I trust the process at the moment. Um, so that's where I'm at. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Alderman. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Alderman from the 11th. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I respectfully request a roll call on the perfecting motion on Board Bill 117. So noted. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? All along from the 5th, you recognize the close. Yes, I'd like to renew my motion for perfection of Board Bill 117. It's been moved uh, by the all of them from the 5th, seconded by the all of them from the 26th that we perfect Board Bill number 117 as amended. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Tyus. Alderwoman Flowers. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Moore. Alderwoman Hubbard. Aye. Alderwoman Ingracia. Alderman Coulter. Aye. Alderman Conway. Aye. Alderman Ortman. Aye. Alderman Balmer. Aye. Alderman Villa. No. Alderman Arnowitz. Alderwoman Murphy, Alderwoman Howard, Alderwoman Green, Alderwoman Beringer, 
Alderman Rohde, Alderman Kennedy, Alderman Davis, Alderman Spencer, Alderman French, Alderman Boyd, Alderman Vaccaro, Alderman Ogilvy, Alderman Cone, Alderman Williamson, Alderman Carter, Alderman Cruzan, President Reed, no. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Ingracia. Alderman Howard. Alderman Rohde. Alderman Spencer. Alderman Spencer. Alderman Ogilvy, Alderman Cohn, Alderman Cruson, Alderman Cruson, Thirteen, I vote eleven, no votes. One present. By your, by your vote, you failed to sustain the motion of all the women from the fifth. Uh, board bill number 117 has failed. That, that's the extent of board bills for perfection. Thirteen, I vote eleven, no votes. One present. One present. No, we've already we've already called the we've called the vote already. Second. The, it's been uh, the all the ones from the 28th you recognize. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to move to reconsider the vote of Board Bill 117, having voted on the prevailing side. It's been moved by the Alderman from 28th, seconded, seconded by the Alderman from the 9th, that we move to reconsider the vote for Board Bill 117. Uh, Alderman from 21st, please state your point of order. I uh, just want to ask a question to the clerk here. Uh, having voted on the prevailing side, is no the prevailing side, even though no didn't get the majority? It, okay. If you count the present as a no. Okay. Yeah, the prevailing side was the no side. All the one from the first. Point of order. I'm sorry. Uh, what uh, the the uh, legal and the clerk said that we have a rule that says the present counts toward. Uh, the vote toward the toward, toward the total what, what votes is the present. Rule? 48. 48. For, 48. Majority required to adopt Everybody hold for a second. Uh, Mr. Mr. Clark, could you join me?
Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, I had a different vote count than uh, the clerk and these guys. I had 13, 11, and one, which means that the means that it means that it passed. Um, so, well, and that's that's the vote. That's the vote we're going on, 13, 11, and 1. Yeah, so the vote count that I had um, was 13, 11, and 1, uh, not 13, 12, and 1. Uh, and so it's the 13, 11, and 1 means that the, bill, the measure passed. So we won't have to do the vote to reconsider, which is what I had. The bill passed, yes. So by your vote, you've sustained the motion of all of them from the fifth and perfected board bill number 117 as amended. We would dispense with line items 17 and 18 and 19. First reading of resolutions. Resolution. Oh. Resolution 72, sponsored by Autumn Vaccaro, French Carter, and President Reed. The Board of Aldermen strongly urge Co Governor Jay Nixon to veto Senate Bill No. 2, House Committee Sub of the House Bill 722 because the General Assembly does not have, the, have authority to enact legislation which supersedes the provision of the Charter of the City. Alderman from the 23rd, you recognize on the first reading of Resolution No. 72. Please refer it to the Rules and Engrossments Committee. It's please. been moved by the Alderman from the 23rd that we assign Resolution No. 72 to Rules and Engrossments and entertain a second on that motion. Entertain a second on that motion. Seconded by the Alderman from the 12th. All in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Madam Clerk, please assign resolution number 72 to rules and engrossment. So, so noted. We have dispensed with line items 22 and 23. 22 miscellaneous unfinished business. We have none. Announcements. Uh, Tuesday, it says on the agenda streets, but there is no meeting on Tuesday. Wednesday, committee meeting, uh, rules and engrossments committee meeting at 1030 in the Kennedy Room. That's on Wednesday. Thursday, streets meeting at 11 o'clock in the Kennedy Room, in the Leisure Room. That's Thursday. Friday, full board meeting, 10 a.m. in the Chambers. That's the extent of my announcement. Alderman from the 25th, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I would like to uh, welcome all of the aldermen after the meeting. Uh, the various labor organizations that are here today in support of the minimum wage bill are graciously also providing lunch so that we can further uh, discuss this very important topic to our city and the tens of thousands of workers that uh, you know, call the city home and also uh, work here as well. So um, I hope that we all take the time to recognize, especially you know, going into the holiday weekend, uh, the time is of the essence and that uh, workers can't wait uh, that we've deliberated on uh, this issue for a very lengthy time at this point and uh, would like to continue that discussion further at this point as well. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, I'd like to, before we complete the meeting, all the one from the 28th, all the one from the 28th, all the one from the 28th, would you like to, just to clear up this, the last business, withdraw the motion to reconsider? Yes, I would be happy to withdraw the motion to reconsider. Please make note of that, Madam Clerk. Uh, any further announcements? Any further announcements? Any further announcements? Alderman from the 18th, you Alderman from the 18th, you recognize on the motion to excuse. Yes, Mr. President, members of the board, I move that the Alderman from the 6th and the 14th be excused for necessary absence. It's been moved by the Alderman from the 18th to entertain a second on that motion. Seconded, seconded by the Alderman. Alderman from the 21st, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, motion, motion carried. Aye. Small, but. I was loud. Persistent. Alderman from the 18th, you recognize on the motion to adjourn.
Yes, Mr. President and members of the board, I move that the board adjourns until Friday, July 10, 2015 at 10 a.m. Been moved by the alderman from 18th to entertain the second on that motion. Seconded by the alderman from the, from the 23rd. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Stand adjourned.